join me in welcoming Eric to the stage. Now, what do people do with phones? I was looking at the, at the Super Bowl, right? Because it's obvious that the right way to do Super Bowl ads, right, is to preview the, them on YouTube ahead of time to create buzz. Furthermore, you should have a whole bunch of them and see which ones perform best and then put that one in your expensive $3 million slot, right? It's obvious if you think about it because it reduces your risk and increases your return. Um, mobile searches on, spike, on, on Chrysler spiked 102 times during the game, whereas their desktop searches only spiked 48%, 48 times, excuse me. For GoDaddy, of course, which is a well-known uh, Super Bowl advertiser, mobile searches increased 315 times compared to 38 times on desktops. So we know now not only, not only are people doing this YouTube uh, essentially test it out model, but they're also now beginning to see the benefits on their mobile devices first. What else do people do? They shop, right? 78% of the smartphone and internet users, users now are using their phones while they're shopping, right? And this was, of course, of great concern for retailers because they have all of this information. But this is the future, and everybody will adapt because people are fundamentally better off with a better and smarter and more, and more empowered, if you will, customer. Um, on and on and on. More than 200 million YouTube mobile playbacks per day. It's happening, and it's happening faster. We look at the charts internally, and it's happening faster than all of our predictions. So everything we talked about, and certainly in our opening, and everything you're going to hear about says, do mobile. So when I look at it from an advertising perspective, I see the union of the mobile device and advertising, and particular display advertising, as being the thing that's going to be really revolutionize this. So when I look at it from an advertising perspective, I see the union of the mobile device and advertising, and particular display advertising, as being the thing that's going to be really revolutionize this. Now, the online display advertising industry is doing very well. We're all having good quarters and years and so forth. And the investments in a tough turnaround we all went through, we've emerged. Every single person here in this room has emerged stronger and more focused as a result. It's all, it's all a good news story. Uh, it's interesting that online display advertising is growing faster than the overall markets. Uh, I've got example after example. And we have more and more major brand advertisers now moving to this. Pretty much every brand advertiser of any significance now has coherent and coordinated campaigns across display media because it works, because they can measure it, and because the technology has finally caught up with the promises that we talked about for so long. I was looking at how big could this market be? Current estimates, $62 billion business for online advertising, $26 billion in the United States. That gives you a sort of sense of the scale of this. And the online display advertising market, 17 billion and about 9 billion in the US. When I modeled it, started looking at the trends, using some of the assumptions that, that I'm sort of talking about, I concluded that the overall display advertising business can be a $200 billion business globally. That gives you a sense of the scale of the market that we're all working into. There'll be many, many winners. We'll be one of them, but there'll be many others. There are lots of ways of playing in this, lots of ways of adding value as you focus on that value-added advertising of the customer, which is fundamentally about solving the problem they have, which is learning about a product and deciding to buy. You solve that problem, you solve the advertiser problem, and you solve the publisher problem. And that's, again, the secret of our approach, as I'll take you through. Now, from our perspective, uh, you know, this all happened. We started with our acquisition of DoubleClick a few years ago, uh, which turned out to be a very, very fortunate acquisition. We added YouTube, of course, Invite Media, Terrasent, AdMob, other technology companies, as well as a lot of stuff that we built ourselves. And we're doing very, very well. We have more than two million publisher partners, uh, and our ad exchange revenue is growing many hundreds of times. So all of a sudden now, we've hit that sweet spot. We've figured out the tools and the technology that people need. And what's interesting is, when I look at it, I think, well, what's it going to take to go from our current sort of a couple of decades, on the order of 10 billion, 20 billion kind of display businesses around, around all these companies that are represented in the room. How do we get to a $200 billion number? Okay, seems pretty obvious if I think about it. It's still too complicated to get a campaign up. It's just too hard. When you actually sit there and you talk to customers, and what they do is you know, say, like, show me how you do this. The other thing that we need to do as an industry is give advertisers and publishers and users, of course, more choice and control. When you actually talk to them, they say, well, I want it this way. There's a reason why they want something slightly different. And as the technology matures, we'll be able to do all of that. So my suggestion would be to think of our approach as based on sort of three, three, three separate but interlinked bets. The first bet is that we're betting on everything changing. 
Now, why? Because everything changes in our world all the time. Right? One of the most fundamental mistakes people make is they assume everything is static. But in fact, evidence is that everything changes all the time. New winners emerge, new platforms emerge, new technological ideas emerge. Um, and, and our intuition about the future, this is a Ray Kurzweil quote, our intuition about the future is linear, but information technology grows exponentially. So that's why we're always surprised by this, because, it, because of compounding, because of the exponential nature of the curves that everybody is using. So an example would be that when you take the ad exchange that we've built and you rely on real-time data, you get a, a multiplier. You get more accurate data more quickly because we can do it in real time. You could never do this before, right? It's a big deal. You can also run cross-platform campaigns. In our case, we use Invite Media, which is our demand-side platform. And you can basically program all those cross-media campaigns. And now you can begin to say, I want one campaign and have the computer organize it around desktop, mobile, and tablet and they'll find their natural growth rates. And we can debate whether mobile or tablet will be going faster than the desktop, but the fact of the matter is you want to be on all three, right? Seems obvious. And you want to let the market decide, and you want to participate in all three. Whatever your users are getting, that's what you want. Um, and the key insight that you have to do is you have to be able to come up with the sort of the nub of how to approach advertising. So what happens is you, know, you have the measurability and you have the reach with the cross-side platforms. And then the final thing you need is you need the sort of the, the publisher solution where they can sort of do the testing, do the iteration. We're seeing publishers, they try something, they try something else, they try something else. They become better experts at our system than we are because they understand if they do this, the following thing happens. And they measure it and they do it every hour. And I think that this is the new online advertising model. It's very much a real-time world. It's very much an iterative world. It's no longer a press the button, go home, have a good time, see what happened in a week. It, it occurs literally live. What I like the most about this future, of all the things that I've talked about, is that information, which is the business that we are in, that I'm certainly in, and many of us, I think all of us are in now, has fundamentally be, been businesses about elites. It's always been about, about how difficult it was to get information, or, or it only covered English speakers, or only the, the wealthier West, or the emergent East, or the powerful and rich. This is a vision that covers everyone. It does not discriminate based on the amount of money you have, as long as you have some kind of a mobile device or some way to get on this internet. And in fact, over the next few years, it looks like between one and two billion people who've never been connected are going to get connected to this world. And we're gonna find out a lot about them. We're gonna find out what languages they speak and the things that they care about. And do they really care about Britney Spears as much as we do, or do they care about something else? We don't know. But to me, the thing that I'm proudest of is that working together, we have made it possible to build industries, and I mean large industries, that can deliver information to billions of people who would never have been able to do it. With that, thank you very much.